The Dolphins, not in trouble. They're at 7-4, and four, rebounding from a very bad start to the 2019 season. Brian Flores addressing the media today on the question of whether it will be Tua Tonga-Vailoa or Ryan Fitzpatrick at quarterback on Sunday when the Dolphins play the Bengals. Here's Coach Flores. And anytime you're dealing with it, with a, um, you know, something that's bothering you, it, there is some some impact on all those things you mentioned. Um, accuracy and velocity, obviously, you know, anytime you have a, a an issue on the hand, um, there's there's some impact. So, um, yeah, obviously that that that's part of the evaluation, and you know, we'll go through it as a staff. Um, you know, we've pretty you know, gone through it, you know, really throughout the entire week, and. You know, both guys, both quarterbacks have practiced. So, um, you know, we got to make a decision. And we'll make a decision um, here pretty soon. And, of course, Tua Tagovailoa has the left thumb injury. That's the throwing hand. Struck a helmet nine days ago. Didn't play against the Jets. And I've got no problem with this. The gamesmanship, the shell game, the who are you going to face? You'll find out on Sunday, even though it is the Bengals. You take advantage of anything that comes your way. And, yes, you prefer to have your starting quarterback healthy. But if he's not, let's milk it for all it's worth and let's keep the opponent guessing. And, Shireen, there still is the possibility that two is fine or close to fine, and this is just a way to let Ryan Fitzpatrick play and win games and position the Dolphins for the playoffs because they saw enough from two in three weeks to believe that Fitzpatrick, at least for now, is the better option. Not that they would ever say that, but that could be going on. And you were talking about that the other day, and you may be on to something. Yeah, yeah and that was my little conspiracy theory that, that maybe he is okay and ready to play. And there was a close-up of his hand that was posted today, and, and uh, to his hand was pretty well wrapped there, and he was doing a handoff uh, with the hand pretty well wrapped, the thumb to protect the thumb. But, you know, they play Cincinnati. Hey, I'm getting the schedule right today. They play Cincinnati this week and then <laughs> Kansas City next week. And it, as, you, as you've as you talked about, Mike, once you've put a, a high draft pick like that in the lineup, it's hard to pull him out. But when he's hurt, there is that excuse that he's hurt. And they could milk this for two weeks if they want. I don't think you can start Tua if he's okay and then come back and put Fitzpatrick in next week about against the Chiefs. But maybe you ride Ryan Fitzpatrick for the next two weeks against the Bengals and then against the Chiefs before you put Tua back in the lineup to close out the season. They're, they're really, you know, it, it's tough a little bit because they're in this playoff race and it's like, do you do you get to experience and really get ready for 2021? Or do you really go for the playoffs when Fitzpatrick probably is your best option when you go for the playoffs? So that's what they've got to decide. Maybe not the easiest of decisions, but maybe you put Tua back in there and maybe you make the playoffs anyway. I don't know. But I, I am I believe that they will play Ryan Fitzpatrick this week. I'm a firm believer, and I think Brian Flores agrees with this approach. You always put the best guy out there. You put the best 11 on the field. Your teams, your players know who the best guys are, and you get yourself into trouble from a credibility standpoint if you're doing anything other than playing the best players. We saw that last year when Josh Rosen was being right. evaluated, and at, at one point Flores said it's going to be Rosen as the starter the rest of the year. A week later, he was benched again, and I think Flores knows – They've got to win football games, and that's the key. Establishing a winning culture. Worry about next year when next year comes. For now, take advantage of a rare opportunity for the Miami Dolphins to be in the playoff conversation, and indeed, they are. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.